Yes, good afternoon folks, welcome back to Celtic Fans TV, we're here for another starting 11 prediction, I've managed to get 10 out of 11 in both of the last two games, can I get 11 out of 11 for tomorrow, here we go. Yes folks, welcome back to the channel, we're here to preview tomorrow's game against St Johnston off the back of that 2-1 victory over Livingston on Wednesday, um, which was another important three points for us. Again, not absolutely scintillating in terms of the performance, but another important three points in the team's consistency so far this season has been absolutely remarkable. We've played 17 games in the league now. We've won 16 of them. That is remarkable consistency by any measure for any Celtic team. Um, so you can't be too critical of them. I think the performance level could be better. I'd like to see it get better tomorrow and against Hibs during the week before we go to Ibrox. Um, I'd like to see his play a little bit better, but listen, you can't have too many complaints. Um, we're in great form um, and we're, we're absolutely coasting at the top of the table at the minute and the longer it stays that way, the better. St Johnston come into this game um, in good form themselves, to be fair. They've unbeaten in their last six games, um, had quite a good run in the league. They're currently sitting fifth. Uh, we do have a long unbeaten record against them. I think it's 24 meetings. You'll see the, the stats in the banner at the bottom of the screen there. Um, we've got a good record against them. But as I say, they're in decent form. Um, and we've just got to go and, and get another three points. But as I say, I'd like to see a slightly better performance. And I think you could tell um, if you watched the, the manager's post-match interview the other night, he wasn't too happy with the performance against Livingston either. Got in good areas. Um, a, lot of, a lot of balls in across the face of the goal. Um, nobody there to finish them. I think he was a wee bit frustrated at the performance Ange Postacoglu. Um, and when asked about the the impact of the Ralston injury on reshuffling the team, he said, "I think there'll be there'll be some reshuffling based on performance alone." So I do expect to see some changes. And as I say, I'd like to see a, a slightly better performance. And hopefully, everybody can can go and enjoy their Christmas Eve and and, and Christmas Day off the back of a really good win for the hoops. Right, let's get to the team. Then we'll start. In goals, as we always do with the starting 11 prediction, and I think there's no prizes for guessing that it will be Joe Hart. Again, a poor goal that we lost the other night. Um, I think he was maybe a wee bit slow to come off his line. I don't think the goal was his fault at all, but Taylor tried to um, slide in to, to tackle Nicky Devlin, and Devlin kind of rode the tackle well, to be fair. He just couldn't get enough on it. Taylor managed to hold him off. Um, but he just got to it and stabbed it beyond Joe Hart. I think if he'd just been slightly quicker off his line, he would have got there to smother it. Um, but aye, he's definitely going to start tomorrow. Right back is obviously a huge problem for us. Um, it's sod's law that we've got three right backs at the club and, and now we've got none available to play tomorrow by the looks of things. Anthony Ralston comes off injured. I don't know if he's going to be back available to play. He went down in the first half um, and it looked quite serious because he's not really a player that stays down unless he's, he's properly hurt. Uh, and then obviously came off in the second half. So I don't think he's going to come back and start in this game. Johnson's ineligible because it's not January yet and Juranovic isn't back. I don't know when Juranovic is, is going to be back in contention for starting from the World Cup, but it puts us in a sticky situation. I think we'll have to do what we did the other night and play Greg Taylor there. <laughs> Greg Taylor's been absolutely brilliant this season, but um, his right foot's for standing on. And I think you can see that when he got in advanced areas on Wednesday night there. Um, I think he had a really good shooting chance in his right foot. He could cut back onto his left. Um, you can tell it's just really unnatural for him and that's understandable because it's it is not his natural side, it's his weakest side um, and he's, he's just doing a job until we can get a, a fit right back um, available again. I think he will play there tomorrow and hopefully it doesn't weaken us uh, too much. Centre half pair in Carter Vickers and Starfelt. Again, they two have still never been beaten in league by the way. I feel like I need to remind people of that all the time. Um, remarkable now that they've been playing together for more than a year. Um, never been defeated in the league when they've played together. Uh, I think that tells you how strong they are as a partnership. Again, a poor goal to lose our night, laps of concentration, but full confidence in them going forward at left back. It will be Bernabe with Taylor moving to right back. Um, another chance for Bernabe to try and impress. I don't think it's quite happened for him since he arrived at the club. Um, he looks a wee bit erratic at times. And I think he's got a lot of learning to do. You can see the raw attributes there. Um, he's got everything he needs to be a good player, but um, he needs that experience. He needs to he needs to do a lot more development before he can become a long-term um, Celtic left-back, in my opinion. But it's another chance for him to show what he can do tomorrow if he does get the nod. In midfield, I think 
I think we will see the same three, McGregor, Hatati and O'Reilly. With Anne saying that he's going to make some changes based on the performance, I was wondering about midfield because the three of them were probably um, the most steady performers the other night, but could one of them be doing with a rest? I know we're only two games back, but we have got St Johnson, then Hibs and then uh, Rangers at Ibrooks, so you want them like 100% sharpness um, going into those bigger games, so this might be an opportunity to rest one of them. I thought Turnbull could maybe come in, but I've stuck with the three of them because I think they're really important. On the right-hand side, I'm going to stick with Abada. Two assists the other night, good performance from him. Tailed off a wee bit in the second half. Obviously, he did get the goal that was somewhat controversially ruled out for offside, although um, I think in the end he is clearly offside. The the VAR delay and confusion about whether it was another phase of play with the defender heading it, um, I don't know. But it was a good performance from him. Some links in the last couple of days uh, with Southampton and, and clubs in the Premier League who have been scouting him extensively for a period of time now. According to the reports, the club are trying to offer him a new contract off the back of that. Interesting to see how that one develops. I don't think Abad is someone we want to be losing. And I think from the player's point of view, and maybe it seems it seems biased to say this, but I think it's too early for him. I think he needs at least another season at Celtic. More consistent minutes, more regular playing time before going trying to take the next big step in his career and go and play at a higher level. Um, I think he's been brilliant for us. He was thrown into the deep end last season, scored lots of important goals. And that is his big strength. He's got a knack for scoring goals. I think he can get much better in terms of dribbling, in terms of end product, um, and crossing positions and with assists. But as I say, he did get two the other night, um, and a bad is one that I'd like us to hold on to. So, um, still so young as well. So if if Southampton are going to try and pry him away, I do expect the club to demand a high fee. He's got lots of potential, and as I say, I think he's got more developing to do here at Celtic before um, he should think about moving away. On the left-hand side, I'm going to go for a change. I think Haksabanovic might get the nod there. Jota the other night, not quite um, at his best. A wee bit off the boil. A few strange um, decisions, maybe overplaying it at times. Um, and again, I think the manager likes to rotate. We know that he likes to rotate. We've seen that in the first half of the season a lot. And now that we're back into to games, we've had two. There's another one tomorrow. There's another midweek one, and then it's the big game at Ibrooks. I think he will be looking to play about with um, a couple of the positions. And I think to give Jota a rest and maybe reintroduce him to the starting lineup at Easter Road wouldn't be a bad idea. I think Haksabanovic um, was decent when he came on the other night. And I'd like to see more of him. I think he is good from the left-hand side. We've seen him on the right. Um, we've even seen him play centrally for, for a few games when McGregor was out injured. And O'Reilly moved to a deeper position. Um, but I think he's got lots of qualities, Haksabanovic, and I'd like to see him start tomorrow. Um, now through the middle it is the big area of debate and the debate is not about who's better even though that's still rumbling on. It's about where Yakimakis is at in his position in the Celtic squad based on these contract um, rumours, reports about a new agent and then that more than cryptic Instagram post the other night um, of the picture of him standing at the side of the pitch waiting to come on uh, with like a wee hourglass. I don't think that was completely necessary. I think that tells you everything you need to know about the current situation. I do think it will be restricting his minutes. I, I think it's a huge factor. I don't think Ange Postacoglu will be wanting to play him f too often if if he's got a, a slight doubt that the commitment isn't quite there or that he's had his head turned or that he's demanding a new contract or wants to move away for the club. We know that Ange is all about commitment. He wants players to be there at the club and committed to, to playing every time they get the chance. And as I say, if, if Ange's had a had a sniff that, that Yakimakis is, is wanting a move, I think that's why we're not seeing him very often. I think Kyogo will start tomorrow. Yakimakis has actually got a good record against St. Johnson. I think he scored three times against them in the space of three or four games. Obviously get the, the late winner up there earlier in the season. Um, I just think Kyogo's going to start. He got the winner the other night. Um, he might be one when, when Ange is talking about the, the balls across the face of the goal you expect him to be in there more often than not um, and he did get across uh, his defender and, and smash in that second goal the other night great ball by Ralston cross for Abada and he's in that position you'd expect him to be in times is run to perfection um, and gets the contact right that's something he doesn't do um, and that's a big criticism of him with the chances he misses sometimes he makes that dart and run across the front post and he just doesn't quite get the contact right, and it looks like a really easy chance, but 
Um, he's just totally misjudged it. It was a good finish. He's now the top scorer. Um, I think outright top scorer uh, at the club this season. And I just don't think Yakimakis is going to get a start. While these reports, speculation um, and the cryptic Instagram posts uh, continue, I don't think he's going to get a start. I think we'll probably see him from the bench again. But will it be for 10, 15 minutes? I don't know. I think the club, if if there is something happening with Yakimakis, and it looks like there is, the club are obviously trying to recruit another striker. I think you could argue that's something that we need to do anyway. Um, I know that there's been so much debate about Kyogo and Yakimakis in terms of set him up to Champions League level. They're both a similar age, so it's not like there's lots of development to come. They're, they're approaching their peak. Um, so that is a challenge for us. Can, can they get to the level that we need them to get at if we want to to make an impact in the Champions League next season? I don't know. So I think the club will be looking to recruit in that area, especially if Yakimakis is for the off. And as I say, I've been saying throughout the, the World Cup break, when these sort of murmurings started, that if it keeps going and keeps going... Um, there's usually no smoke without fire and that Instagram post the other night I think tells you everything you need to know about where it's at there you go that's 11 I think the manager will go with tomorrow like this video comment with your own thoughts below let me know who you think will start do you think Kyogo will play through the middle what other changes would you make to the team let me know in the comments below don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you tomorrow outside Celtic Park with the full time reaction as normal cheers